Look, let's just say it wasn't a success. Tamara and Brent's wedding vows. We have hoped we'd seen the end of their drama, but as always, maths proved us wrong. My biggest negative was leaving my puppy for so long. I will never do that again. Um, and my biggest positive was all the girlfriends I've made. Oh, yeah. no, no. Yeah. Yeah. Was the negative not the fact that you tried to pick up Mitch when we uh, got out of the experiment and he rejected you? What? He's joking. Yeah, what is he talking He's about? He's joking. Was that on a thing or...? What? I tried to pick up Mitch. Whoa. We know, babe. I thought Mitch and Alan broke up and it was like what? a... So she thought they had broken up. She just said oh, that. Oh, then she's in a hole. So which one is it? Yeah. Did you not invite him or was yeah. it because he thought they were broken up? Oops. Ooh, Tamara joins us now to let us know what really happened when she tried to crack on to Mitch. Well, Tamara, good morning to you and thank you for joining us this morning. Uh, good morning, you, guys. First of all, were you shocked to hear that Mitch had shared those texts with Brent? What was going through your head? No, absolutely not. That's not what I was shocked about. Um, I was shocked at the way Brent came out with that and the allegations of you tried to pick up Mitch and got rejected and that's why you see or you hear Jess and Sam next to me laugh and they're like, what? Because if you saw the text messages, they were so platonic and it wasn't... It, yeah, it wasn't even me who invited us all to dinner. It was a mutual friend um, of Mitch's and mine that had invited Sam, Mitch and I to dinner. So, um, yeah, look, there's, there's nothing to hide in those text messages and I'd show anyone who wanted to see them. Does one of the text messages just say you actually want a, quote, piece of Mitch? Absolutely not. No, as I said, those messages are so Because my follow-up would have had to have been, what piece? And so I'm glad that they're not yeah. <laughs> No, there's, there's nothing scandalous to those text messages and, I, yeah, as I said, I wouldn't care who, who, who was to see them. Yeah. It's, it's okay. so blown out of proportion. It's, yeah, it's quite funny. All right. Well, let's talk about you and Brent because it has not been smooth sailing at any point throughout this experiment. No. And I think a lot of people are a little bit maybe upset with how you have belittled him because of his occupation. Do you mm -hmm. have any regrets or reflections on that? Um, I definitely can understand that and I do see that um, from the public's point of view and I want to apologise if I have ever offended anybody with the words that I've said. I absolutely don't look down on anybody else. I come from a working class family. Everything that I have I've worked really hard for myself. Um, my frustration and I know the way that it came out is awful but my frustration and what you don't see is the conversations that Brent and I have around our lives outside of this experiment, um, our goals, what we're, you know, where we're going, like what we've done in the past. Like, say, Dubai, for example, he spoke about working in Dubai. And he, I, when I'd ask him, he'd always say, oh, it's too hard to explain. I'd be like, well, try and help me, you know, mm. try and help me understand. I'm supposed to be with this person for life and they can't give me anything about themselves. And when, in one of the answers Brent gave me was, I don't need to worry about the future. After this, I'll be set up. In alluding to me that he's here for the wrong reasons. It wasn't it wasn't right. intention. So, you know, we're not getting along. So sure. he's there saying, I really like Tamara, this and that. And I'm like, why? Like it just it just wasn't adding up to me. Everything he was saying was just so so yeah, my frustration. So you're saying was there was a like, duplicitous nature you have of how he was to being go home to? He was being duplicitous with how he was talking on camera and off camera to you. Uh, the conversations were recorded on camera, they're just not shown, which, right. yeah, it's, it's disappointing to me because those comments were not made out of, like, they're, they're out of context What's from what's okay. yeah, At the from end from of all this, shown. though, uh, Tamara, and we do appreciate you being here and your honesty with this, at the end of all this, in this experiment, how do you feel coming out of this now? How do you feel that this, this is coming to an end? Um, you can go back to your, your, a, a regular life. How are you feeling about it all? And do you think you can still find love out there? I think anyone can find love, definitely. Um, a lot of negativity of me has been highlighted and that's okay, like I'll own it. I'm not going to blame anything on the edit. I've said what I've said. Um, I know when I'm frustrated I can be um, quite bitchy and snarky and, and whatnot. I do need to work on that, reflect on that. I'm, and I'm always happy to grow. I think we all should grow as people and mature and learn from mm. our mistakes and definitely definitely think I'll take away from that. Well, good on you. We're glad that there have been some positive outcomes throughout the experiment for you. We appreciate you turning up and chatting to us this morning and we cannot wait to see what goes down tonight because we hear it's even hotter than last night. Uh, look yep. after yourself tomorrow and thanks very much for joining us. Thanks, guys. Tomorrow. Thanks for having me. Bye. Well, the experiment might be over, but the maths drama, it keeps on coming, yeah, doesn't it? Never really <laughs> the couples reunited last night, including Carolina and Daniel.
who got together after a shocking cheating scandal. You already got what you want, won this experiment once. Bloody oath I did. And guess what? You wouldn't have made it anywhere if you didn't steal someone else's wife because your <laughs> wife didn't want anything to do with you. <laughs> exactly, Dion. Listen, I never had anything with Dion. We asked me to marry. Apart from a marriage. Yes, we never had kiss, never held hands, we never anything, and you know that. Thank God we didn't. <laughs> It's drama, isn't it? The controversial couple, Carolina and Daniel, join us now. Great to have you. Hi, here. guys. Howdy. Hello. <laughs> well, that was a lot. It was a lot. How are you both? Doing good. Pretty good. good, yeah. <laughs> no, but but walking into that room when you know basically pretty much everyone hates you, mm. it's not a nice feeling, I imagine. Oh, definitely not. But we had each other. It was good to know that we had each other's back, each other's support. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that, that's a nice part. Like, it seems like you're still, still here and still together. And when you were there last night and when you watch back what happened, of course, this all happened a while ago, how do you feel seeing it, like you're seeing it now? Oh, look, yeah, it's, there's a lot of pretty intense emotions. It's high anxiety. Um, like you said, there's a room full of people that essentially don't like us. And we're in it together. And you've got to navigate that, so it's not easy. Because mm. I know that you um, you demanded an apology from Mitch over some of the comments that he made to the boys about mm. Carolina. I mean, were you surprised that he refused? Look, I definitely didn't demand it, but I would have liked an apology. Um, the way he kind of tried to get at me at the boys' night by objectifying Carolina, I don't have respect for that. And I thought she was owed an apology. Uh, Carolina, the two of you were sort of scheming at the table. Is this about creating more drama or defending you two as an entity? How did you...? Uh, I guess a bit of both. At the end of the day, we signed up for a show and we wanted to entertain everyone, so... <laughs> I'll tell you right now, this is entertainment over everything else. Yeah. <laughs> and it has been entertaining. Yeah. yeah. Mm. If it was more about love, there'd be two viewers. Huh? Explain that. Well, think about the, the ratio of how you see it portrayed as a love story as drama. 95 drama, 5% love. Yeah, but I mean, because well, it's heaps of drama. <laughs> and we're the 5% love. You're the 5% love. Does that mean the others are the 95% drama? When you look 100%. At it now? 100%, they are the 95%. <laughs> mm -hmm. But I mean, are you, are you sorry for the way that it played out and what you did to your partners? Well, we never really had anything with our partners apart from a fake marriage and an experiment, really. So it's not like we, we had an emotional or a physical connection with any of them. So for us, it was... Um, yeah, uh, we didn't think that we owned them anything. We're seeing there the display of PDA you two had last night. What was that about? <laughs> Look, Ooh, by, this, <laughs> by this point, and we got heat for that as well. By this point, we're in love. We live together. We're in a relationship. We're just being ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, but that was frowned upon. OK, so you guys, have, do you love each other? Have you found love? We, we have. definitely found love. <laughs> well, it's a good result. There we yeah. go. There you go. 5% love. <laughs> and you've provided lots of the drama for us over this season. Very sad to see it ending. And, of course, I think the last reunion is tonight. So I imagine more fireworks? A lot more. <laughs> yeah, there's definitely more fireworks. That's for sure. There'll be a breakup, tears, walkouts, all, all of it. Really? <laughs> Excellent. Get the popcorn ready, Charles. Saving We're in some for of the it. Best to last. <laughs> all right, and you can catch the final episode of Married at First Sight right here on 9 or 9 now at 7.30 tonight.